Great. Here we go. This is Brother Doug. Um, we are back. Sorry about the uh, intermission, people. So um, we're, this is going to be a brief part two of our Revelations study today. So um, we're going to have our brother Clinton has just joined us, and he is going to be reading Revelations 15. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great among us, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of Yahuwah is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass having harps of Yahuwah. They sing, and the song of Moses, the servant of Yahuwah, and the song of the Lamb, say, Great and marvelous are your works, Yahuwah Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Yahuwah, and glorify your name? For you alone are Kadosh. For all nations shall come and worship before before you for your judgments have been manifested after these things i looked and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the of the testimony in heaven was opened and out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues clothed in pure bright linen and having their chests girded with golden bands. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bows, bowls full of the wrath of Yahuwah, who lives forever and ever. The temple, the temple was filled with the smoke from the, the glory of Yahuwah and, his, and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. You want me to stop there then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just so um, if anyone has anything um, to, to add or anything jump out at them from the, from the previous chapter. Um, that was the end of 15. So anything um, anyone want to add? The uh, they sang the song of Moses in this in this chapter, and I think there's a different song being sung in chapter fourteen, verse three. It's a new song. That's just my thought that it's probably. A new song. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely a, a new song, and um, the um, yeah, it might be a different song actually, because it would be kind of weird that if it's the same song for the song of Moses to be, um, you know, referred to in verse in chapter fifteen, but the chapter before says a new song, so it's so, Definitely seems like there's a difference between the one that's sung in per, um, chapter 14 than chapter 15. Yeah. And um, the the wrath of Yahuwah is over finally. Um, and then the sea of glass is his throne. Um, And those overcoming the beast and his image and his mark, and the number of his names, stand on the sea of glass. So, I guess we're all given harps. <laughs> I've, never, I've never played a harp before. I've written for a harp. <laughs> I haven't either, but I like to. <laughs> yeah, I would love to play harp. Like I say, I I've written for harp, and it's. Writing for the harp is like writing for the piano because you have yeah. <laughs> you have both 
travel and bass huh. and hands to play it. <laughs> it's just plucked but, instead of yeah. mashed like a key. Well, there used to be a place down in Loveland that um, sold harps and that you know the big beautiful harps and I went in there and boy they want a lot of money for those things. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's like a piano without the piano. Yeah, like Dennis said, it is kind of, it is like a piano without the wooden the structure around it. it was in the back of that piano, it's kind of hard to. Yeah. I never, never thought of that, but that <laughs> makes sense. Uh, I just I just know that the harp um, makes a beautiful sound, and when I wrote. Um, Let's see, it was the, the song about Sukkot. Um, I wanted it to sound beautiful. I wanted to give it a real um, gorgeous sound, you know, and and I thought, well, what is more gar gorgeous than the harp? And and I have harp doing arpeggios just constantly all through the song and it came out just like I wanted it to, and I really love that song. It's called the Millennial Feast of Sukkot, and if anybody listening wants to hear it, you can find it on my YouTube channel, Shoshana. Shoshana Rogers is my name, and that's my YouTube channel. So. Um, the feast, of, the millennial feast of Sukkot is the name of it. Mm. Written for uh, harp. <laughs> harp and um, a few other instruments. The that sounds awesome. Was, what's that? That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah you had to hear it. I love it. I love that song. But I want people to record my music. Um, this is sheet music written for choir and band. And I need four part harmony, you know, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, the usual, and band instruments like piano and bass guitar and um, harp maybe, flute, violin. I, I use different instruments in different songs. Um, so whatever I feel will give me what I need for the song. But check out my music. And if you have a choir and a band and are looking for music to honor Yahuwah and Yahusha, Check it out. Okay, I put in my plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought, so. I, I thought it was interesting in the one uh, verse there, it was talking about the, the sea of glass mingled with fire, and I didn't really know what that meant, but yeah, interesting. I think it's just so gorgeous, it's probably indescribable. Um, glass mingled with, with fire, that, ooh, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Must be really shiny or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, just think of all the pretty colors that you might get in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we know his throne is is sapphire, and um, a fire would give you like a burst of ruby. And uh, yes, I just, I think of um, the colors in fire. You like ruby and um, what's that one that? Uh, People born in November have have kind of a 
yellowish orange stone. I don't remember what it's called. Yellowish orange is topaz. <laughs> is is it topaz? I was I was thinking topaz. But I wasn't sure. Anyway, um just the I was, you know, uh, imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was gonna get my um high school ring and uh there was a kid uh that was a year ahead of me and um he bought a bright well, it was uh, had more gold in it than a lot of the kids got on their rings, and then he got a a topaz in it, and it just looked like a drop of honey, and it was just beautiful ring. So, mm. sounds gorgeous. Yes. Well, let's get back to the study. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. This this is um, a chapter that uh, comes after all the all the bad stuff and um, is is going to be a real. I think the harp the harp is a beautiful instrument to play to show how it's going to be in the kingdom, and which is why I chose that instrument to play the Millennial Feast of Sukkot. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I, I personally think there's gonna be a lot of, lot of instruments being played in, uh, in the kingdom, so. <laughs> oh yeah. A lot, a lot of stringed instruments too, especially. Especially the harp. <laughs> yes. There's one thing uh, the harp I think is probably like a guitar. You probably don't even know have to have to know how to play it. You could probably just uh, strum it and run your run your fingers over it and make pretty music. And uh, I I don't know how to play the guitar, but I can strum it and uh, you move my fingers around a little bit and the chords and it makes beautiful music and it's very soothing also. Mhm. Mm yeah, I'm I'm um pretty well uh well I'm, I'm an adequate guitar player I, i'll say i'm not the best but i can play the guitar and um it's supposed to be the easiest to learn but the hardest to master and really kinda, yeah mm -hmm. and the piano uh. is just the opposite it's the most difficult to learn but the easiest to master. Huh. And somebody I, told me a piano was easy to play, so. <laughs> somebody told you the, Somebody said the, uh, the piano was one of the easiest instruments. Well, it's easy, it's easy to master, but it's, it's difficult to learn all the keys is what, um, I struggle, I struggle with all the different keys to play in. With a, with a guitar, I used to play, well, I could play bar chords, but um, you can also capo a guitar and play in a familiar key, but you're playing actually in B flat or E flat or whatever. Um, your, your music is written in. Um, the capo flattens the strings. <laughs> the capo flattens the strings and and moves it to a different key. I say um, that's pretty. Neat. Yeah, and uh, this um, song of Moshe or Masha. Um, Servant of Yahuwah and the Song of the Lamb include uh, Dennis and I read over the entire Song of Masha back when we were studying the Torah and um, it's a pretty long song it it's longer than any song that I ever wrote um, yeah, that's the album set. 
That's the album. <laughs> uh, it's like two pages long or something. It's huge. Wow. But it's, uh, it's all about the story of, of of our ancestors in Israel and how how they came through the Red Sea and or the Reed Sea and how they um were spoken to by Yahuwah at the Mount Sinai and given given the marriage vows which is for the hundred and forty four thousand. It's it's very long and um tells the whole story. So I guess that'll be appropriate for the end of the day. Yes. Um uh, that verse I just read and also there was a uh, mix to that. It was well in the same verse I think is talking about those that that, over, that overcame the beast and uh, that was that'd be pretty exciting to be one of those people. Absolutely. And that's what we're striving to, to be. That is our yeah. goal to be one of these hundred and forty four thousand. Yes, definitely. Because if like, we're one of them what is the alternative <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to think of the alternative <laughs> <laughs> i was just uh a little bit ago i was just reading uh i just started read read the first few uh verses of jeremiah 11 and um i was off subject but uh Anyway, he was talking about blessing and cursing. Oh, cursing, I guess. Well, I, yeah, blessing and cursing. And uh, if you if you follow his word, then you will be blessed. But if you don't follow his word, then you will be cursed. And um, I was meditating on it, and I was wondering, you know, is you guys think it's possible to be uh, partially blessed and partially cursed? <laughs> I think <laughs> most people are in that category now. Yeah, um, but they have to move into the area where they totally obey Yahuwah. And here's the thing. Um, this is why Yahusha had to die on the state for us, because now we have a way when we stumble, all we have to do is ask forgiveness. And the Father is just and faithful to forgive and um i mean that's it's that simple but we have to confess our sins before him or they're not forgiven and sometimes that's the hard part we don't want to admit that we're falling short sometimes oh yes well, my part my problem is that <clears throat> I've committed the same sins um, <laughs> too many times, and it seems like a, it seems like a a wrong thing to continue to ask for the the pardon for the same sin but several times. Has to do, yeah. How many times will a person forgive another? Seventy times seventy, he says. So, I mean, just continue to ask his forgiveness and and really try to put it behind you. Uh, that's that's what repentance is all about. Like Don Kimmer said, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there is a difference um, <clears throat> with willful sinning and unwillfully, meaning that there's there's a difference between transgressing on purpose and transgressing by mistake. Or by, or by either out of anger or out of pride, we mess up. There, there's definitely a difference. Even in the Torah, there was there was certain sacrifices you would have to do when you willfully sin. And Yahuwah even says, you know, when someone sins by mistake, or to do this, and I will forgive them. So 
there's there's definitely a difference. And the key verse that that people love to quote is Hebrews ten twenty six to twenty seven. But that verse says, if we will fully after knowing the truth, if we do it on purpose, yeah, after knowing the truth. That that's the key word, willfully. And what willfully means it means to like basically. For someone to say, oh, I know his laws, but I don't believe I have to keep them. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's willfully sinning. But if we fall short or, you know, the Greek word for transgression of law or sin means to miss the mark in the New Testament. So if we miss the mark, but we, we were trying and we were not trying to sin, it's definitely different. I think Yahuwah looks at stuff like that differently. He doesn't he doesn't look at it like you were in rebellion and you were sinning against him willfully. I think right. so. <laughs> and what about <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well yeah, we shoot for obedience, but realistically Yahuwah knows himself that we are carnal humans, we're always gonna be fighting with flesh until his return, until he makes us into, you know, his sons until we're you know in our glorified our esteemed bodies we're always going to be fighting with sin we're always going to be fighting a battle within inside ourselves paul even says himself you know what i do is not what i want to do what i do i don't do so he's even telling you it's that hard to be obedient 110 percent of the time and i'm not saying it for people to give up but i'm saying it in a way that realistically you're gonna mess up at some point and that's why Yahuwah says if we confess to him, you know, he will forgive us. Because he knows we're not perfect. He knows we can't obey the law 110% to the T without sinning once. He doesn't expect that of us. He knows that it's going to happen. But he wants us to be obedient and have a willful heart to obey him. He doesn't want us to be in rebellion and be like, oh, I'm going to sin. Or, or the Christian theology, oh, we can't obey the law, you know, 110% of the time, so we're just going to not obey it at all. That's willfully sin. That's, that's being in the yeah. saying, oh, we can't keep it, so we're not going to try. That, that's, that's the exact opposite of what Yahuwah's will is. Even though we can't keep it to the key, and we can't be perfect like Yahusha was, we are still to go for that goal. That's still the goal. He's still the goal, yeah. and that's, you know. And he even tell, tells us in his word that the righteous scarcely make it. <laughs> Kepha, that's in, um, I think it's yeah. the yeah. righteous. Well, right. well said, guys, and that really encourages me, encourages me a lot, so I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I think someone get people get carried away when we get into the Hebrew roots and you know we, we look at verses where Yahuwah told Abraham be perfect because I am perfect and people take it to the extreme like see he's saying for him to be perfect yeah but you know realistically Abraham wasn't perfect he made mistakes every one, once in a while Yahuwah wasn't saying, like, literally be perfect, like, you got to be totally without sin, because John even says himself, if you say you're without sin, you're fooling yourself. So the, the reality of it is that we can never physically be without sin reigning our, like, physically in our body. We're always going to be tempted. We're always going to be, we're always, there's always going to be that temptation and we're always going to be dealing with our pride, ego, you know, lust of the flesh. We're always going to be dealing with that. We're, there will be times where we mess up and not even realize it. And that's still sin. And we still got to repent for that. You know, and that's why it's a, it's a daily process of turning away from more and more sin and trying to be closer and closer to our role model, which is Yahushua. He is perfection. And we're... That's our goal, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we're not going to stumble. We're not, you know, that we can be totally, quote unquote, perfect like he was because, you know, it's impossible to be him. He, he was, you know, he was Allahim with us. 
He, I mean, mm -hmm. for us to think that we can be Yahushua, you know, we're fooling ourselves. We're, we, we can be like him, but we can't exactly be him. We can't imitate what he did, you know, in the essence of. Well, in some ways we can. Yeah, but not his, not his perfection. That's what I mean by imitate him. I mean, like, actually be him. Like, it, to me personally, you can be, we can be as close as we can to him. Yes, we can be as close as righteous as he was, but we, we can't be at his level. He, he, we are he is a deity, he's divine. He's, he's not a mere mortal. I mean, there's, there, there is a level that, that we can never reach that he is. There's, yeah, so we, we are I'm told to overcoming is not easy, but we are told to overcome, and um, we're given trials, fiery trials, things that you would never imagine if you haven't walked this walk of life, but we all know what fiery trials are, because we've been in them, and still are in them and they work in us righteousness they cause us to overcome yes <sighs> i mean you can either overcome and strive or not and i mean those as one or the other yeah the best way i can describe the what the goal is 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 uh, using a worldly metaphor. When a when a dad sees that his son is trying, even though his son can't, you know, meet the expectations one hundred ten percent, but he's at least trying. That's what makes a dad happy. But when when you got a child that says, "Oh, I can't meet his expectations. I can't do it. I, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just going to do what I want to do." You know, that's. That's kind of like the paradigm that we have with the father, with Yahuwah, that all he wants us to do is try. All he wants us to do is put our best effort. That's all he's asking. You know? Yeah. And, you know, when, when, a, when, someone, when a creation of his says, oh, screw it, I can't do it 110%, so I'm not going to do it at all. You know, obviously, you know, that's not the type of child he wants. So, you yeah. know. <clears throat> right. That's, that's that's a good point. It is it's important to think about that uh, from from his perspective. So, and I I do believe that that's why he made his parents <laughs> so that we can because yeah. we're in his shoes to be able to understand. Yeah, and he he has many 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 creations that he is only one father over everyone. So we can't even imagine what he's going through. Stress wise, yeah. can't even imagine. Yes. So he can um, handle it, though. Oh, he can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll, he might get angry at times, but he can handle it. I don't, I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's not a human like we are. He. And handle things a whole lot better. Oh yes. <laughs> um, Sally or Dennis, y'all want to say something? We haven't heard much yeah, from you guys. <laughs> well, you guys were just so busy visiting. I just was listening, <laughs> but I, but I was going to offer to read uh, chapter sixteen when we get ready. Yep. Okay. I think we're ready. Okay. Second, I gotta get resituated. <clears throat> and I heard a loud voice from the dwelling place saying to the seven messengers, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of Yahusha on the earth. And the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and an evil and wicked sore came upon the men, those having the mark of the beast and those worshiping his image. And the second messenger poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood, 
as of a dead one, and every living creature in the sea died. And the third messenger poured out his bowl on the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the messenger of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Yahusha, the one who is and who was and, and who shall be, because you have judged these because they have shed the blood of set-apart ones and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they deserve it. And I heard another out of the altar saying, Yea, Yahusha El Shaddai, true and righteous are your judgments. And the fourth messenger poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was given to him to burn men with fire. And men were burned with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of Elohim who possesses authority over these plagues, and they did not repent to give him esteem. And the fifth messenger poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his reign became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues with, from pain. <clears throat> and they blasphemed the Elohim of the heavens for their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their works. And the sixth messenger poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up in order to prepare the way of the sovereigns from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits as frogs. For they are spirits of evil, of, well, my, this version says demons, um, doing signs which go out to the sovereigns of the entire world to gather them to the battle of the, that great day of Yahuwah the Almighty. See, I am coming as a thief. Barak is he who is staying awake and guarding his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Har Megiddo, or Megiddo. And the seventh messenger poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the dwelling place of the heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there came to be noises and thunders and lightning, and there came to be a great earthquake, such a mighty and a great earthquake as had not come to be since men were on the earth. And the great city became divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babel was remembered before Elohim to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and great hail from the heavens fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed Elohim for the plague of the hail, because that plague was exceedingly great. Wow. All they'd have to do is repent. Yes. I mean, it's um, simple. <laughs> you just turn around and, and go the right way. And <laughs> it's amazing that some people just won't do that. Yeah. Well, that's sure is. Criminal yeah. Criminal. yeah. Right. They're not people anymore. It's, it's unbelievable that um, some people don't have a heart to obey. And, uh, yes. I feel sorry. They want, them more, they want their own way more than anything else. Yeah. Now they're like Hashitan. Yeah. I will ascend, be like the Most High, blah, 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 blah. But well, if you're going to be like the Most High, then you're going to live like the Most High. <laughs> well, I think these, these um, men were so filled with evil spirits that they couldn't get past the evil spirits to repent. They were just too filled up with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a choice. Like there's going to be a lot of them. Listen to Yahuwah. 
or you can listen to the evil spirit. <laughs> That's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. And another interesting thing is you have a uh, the only place in the Bible where, in my opinion, there's a Trinity is Revelations, and it's not a holy Trinity. It's the beast, the false prophet, and Satan himself, the dragon. And three spirits are coming out of them three. Right. Unclean spirits. Good, good point. An unholy trinity, then. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a demonic trinity. Yeah. <laughs> they are spirits of demons. And um, another interesting point for the audience is that the verse that um, Sally read where it says they, they will gather them to the place that in the Hebrew is called Armageddon. Well, the actual Hebrew word is Har Megiddo. Mm -hmm. Actually, in English, means Armageddon. So the, um, there's actually a land of Megiddo in Jerusalem. And that is rumored where this battle will take place and um for a lot of reasons um you can check out ezekiel 38 where it talks about the battle of magog and gog and that all these nations are coming against jerusalem but who escapes us from these attacks so um you know for many reasons people believe that the um the land of Megiddo in Jerusalem will be where the Battle of Armageddon takes place. So I think unless anyone has anything else to add, I think we will be um, ending this recording. No, I don't have anything to add. All right. So thank you, everyone, who was listening on this study. This is Brother Doug, um, Sister Shushana, Brother Dennis, our Brother Clinton, and our Sister Sally. We hope you enjoyed this study. Um, sorry again that I had to make a short part two. Um, so hopefully you guys have a great rest of your Sabbath, and thank you for joining us. Shalom. All right.